greet you tonight in the grace of our God, Father of our Lord and Savior, Sean Gray, and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen, and we thank God for, for this opportunity to be with you, amen, we thank God, this go on, one us all, it's four hours. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. I, I thought I could tighten it, but I think I can just wore it out. And to those of you, think of it, those of you who had a mind tonight to want to be here, amen. So many people have charged me and some of me to stay at home and all that, but I, I understand, I understand where they were coming from, but but got to go on. Amen. You might not want to say amen, but the word got to go. I know I have people around me that are able to do the job. Amen. But it's, it's my way. It's my way of dealing with my circumstances. Amen. Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work. And I can't come down. Amen. Psalms 143, verse 10, and uh, we're going to pick up what we left off. We talk a lesson about perseverance. To those of you who have tuned in, thank you for sharing this evening Bible Institute with us. Talk about active obedience. To the will of God. Some of us have an obedience, but it's not active. Like a cell phone with no service. Amen. We have all features and functions, but no service. They they can't operate, they can't function because we're not connected, or rather the better word, we're not activated. You can buy a phone, but you have to get it what? Activated. You can read the manual and be well acquainted and familiar with the features and the functions, but if it's not what? Activated. Amen. Matter we have to be active in our obedience. Psalms 143 verse 10 Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. If you needed a subtopic today on this lesson, it kind of would lean toward we need to fix our lean. Tell somebody you're leaning. You're leaning. You're leaning. You're leaning. When it comes down to being obedient to the will of God, you're leaning. Trust in the Lord with all of your what? And not to your own what? And whenever we know the word of God, but we lean to what we and how we understand and how we are used to doing things, then we haven't fully trusted the Lord with what all of our heart. And therefore, the direct result is we don't acknowledge God in all of our ways. And the result of that is he can't direct our paths. So we wind up traveling undirected paths hoping that the spirit of God is with us and we are in an adversary in opposition and want to know what's wrong. So tonight I want, I want us to hear what David says. Teach me to do your will. In the original Hebrew that would say 
teach me to desire what you desire. We are not accustomed to the ways of God. It's not our nature. Divinity is something we must become acquainted with. That new creature. That new creation. Amen. There are many people who want you to believe that they just know God. But if you really be honest, every day we have to get to know him. Because if he chooses not to reveal himself to us, we will stay in the blind. Teach me to desire what you desire. Then it says, for you are my God. If you are my God, then it is my utmost responsibility to please you. For the same psalmist said, when my ways please him, he gives me the desires of my heart. You are my God. Money is not my God. You are my God. People are not my God. Therefore, I'm not trying to please, I'm not trying to be a people pleaser. You are my God. Everybody else can be upset with me, but as long as I know I'm pleasing you, because you are my God. You are the one who makes provisions for me. You are the one, God, that, that provides for me. That You are the one that protects me. You are the priest of my soul. You are the savior of my soul. You are, you are the giver. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. You are my God. You 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 my you the reason I breathe. It's in you that I live. That I move and I have my being. Somebody walking out of my life ain't going to paralyze me. Somebody stop giving to me is not going to make me miss out on nothing because I haven't been serving them. My service is to God because he is my God. Then it says, your spirit is good. Tell somebody, God don't have a bad spirit. <laughs> it's not a bad spirit in God's spirit. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? You don't believe me? Just read Galatians uh, 5 and 22. For the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, long suffering. That's good stuff right there. I said that's good stuff. If you don't believe me, just go back to what the flesh does. Just go back to verse 20 in Galatians 5 and you'll see what the flesh produces. Your spirit is good. And every now and then, I'll tell you this happening when I'm rushing through this. Every now and then, there was a lady uh, at the church when we were on Buckner that uh, most people called the uh, called the mother savior, they called the holy roller, and all that. Uh, Sometimes who we think are fanatics, people who are just more serious than we are. You know, people we say, "Oh, it don't take all that." Well, for you it don't, but for me it does. Amen. Because you don't know what he did for me. Uh, that, that's how you deal with that. It's, it's not that somebody it don't take all that. You just don't know what they owe. Hello, my payments may be more than yours because God had to, my, my debt was bigger than yours. Amen. Look at somebody and tell him he covered a lot of cavalry for me. My sins were many. Amen. I wasn't, I wasn't as good as some of y'all are by nature that I am by practice. I have to practice being good. I had to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I want to please you today. Some of y'all can just get up and don't even talk to God and I'm going to just have a great day. <laughs> no, that ain't me. That ain't been my case. The devil, the devil be saying, good morning, what are we going to tell today? How are we going to breathe the Holy Spirit today? What we say we're going to do today that we're going to, yeah. Amen. 
Somebody said, when the bishop at this time in your life, you ought not be. Let me tell you something. It used to be a whole lot of things. Now it's a couple of things. And then it moved from a couple of things, but there is a one thing that so easily besets all of us. Amen. All right. But God is a good spirit. She used to say these words when people be trying to be fun and act funny. She said, bless your spirit. Bless your spirit. Tell somebody to bless your spirit. See, to bless us, when you tell somebody to bless your spirit, that means they ain't having a good spirit right there. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and a good spirit is God's spirit. God, God, God ain't like some of us on and off. This Sunday you speaking, next Sunday you not. This year we fall out, next year we hook up. You know, we back, we back going to lunch and breakfast and all that kind of stuff. And then somehow, God, God is faithful. Amen, amen. Let me move on, let me move on. To lead me into the land, I like this. Lead me in the land of uprightness. That's where we get that leaning from. An act of obedience will cause us to live upright. Now, in, 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 in the case of uh, horticulture, tree planting, when we, uh, when we moved uh, into this facility uh, during the preparation part of it, the city zoning and planning and all that required that we plant trees. I was saying, we don't want no trees. And they said, well, it's not about what you want. It's about what is required for you to get your permit plans have to show that you have around the perimeter of your building either a wall, a fence or trees. Shrubbery. What they had it laid out. You can go shrubs if you go shrubs. They told us the kind of shrubs. If you do trees, they told us what kind of trees. And if we did uh, material, uh, they told us what kind of material we could have. We could have uh, uh, metal and brick. We could have all brick. We could have wire fence, but we had to have something around. So most time, you see trees around perimeters because they're cheaper. Because put a wall around all of this would would have been almost half of what the building cost. Amen. Put to, to put iron and put columns and make you know make it look pretty. It costs money. We, the wall the wall itself is going to be about three hundred seventy five thousand dollars. The wall itself, just to go all the way around from there all the way around to the end of the property. So, of course, we were with trees. <laughs> Amen. But in those trees, when they were first planted, and I wonder, I don't know if I asked y'all this, I wonder, have you grown as tall as these trees grown in four years? Because those trees don't grow. They don't grow through the pandemic. They threw through a cold snap. They, they out there right now. I wonder, did you grow through all of that? It came a point to one day I came up here and I discovered something was missing. What was missing on those trees were the anchors. If you remember, those trees at one time had wires tied to them and spread out and stakes were driven in the ground. But after some time, the husband man came and removed the anchors, the pricks, the thorn. Amen. Paul said something like this. He said, there was given to me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Thorns are not the prick of a cactus. Now, Paul was saying that was something given to me to keep me upright. That every time I try to lean, it'll stick me and I straighten back up. And so when they tied those things around the tree, it wasn't to strangle the tree. It was to make sure, David, that those trees out there would grow upright. And when they got strong enough, to stand on their own. The thorn was removed. I know if we had to put a record on them trees. We would have heard some conversation like we say. 
Ooh, this is getting on my nerve. Ooh, when they gonna take this off of me? Why do you have to put this on me? I know how to grow. Y'all don't talk like that. God, when you gonna do this? I understand what it means to grow straight. I know how to just, uh uh, no, no, no. You gotta have something that will keep you in an upright position. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just ready to live in the land of uprightness. Tired of leaning. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so here's the here's the lesson tonight, and we'll 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 go. The land of uprightness, upright in everything. Upright in, in, in finances, upright in my spiritual, my spiritual warfare, upright in my spirituality, upright. I want to be just straight in everything. Amen. Y'all not want to be leaning. In your responsibility as a husband, as a wife, as as a pastor, as a as a, as a disciple of Christ. Y'all not want to be the one leaning all the time. Amen. When you see stuff leaning, that means its thorn was removed prematurely. So here we go. I got three things tonight. We have in the text tonight, we have aspiration revealed. Aspiration revealed. Teach me. That was his aspiration. We all, listen, I told him this afternoon, we all have desires. When you get saved, don't mean you got to throw everything out the window. Amen? A lot of people, that's why a lot of people run from God and run from church and run from salvation and run from serving God because they feel like when you serve God, then you can't want nothing no more. That's not true. In all your ways, acknowledge God. In, every, in everything you aspire to do, you, if you wanted to aspire to be a dancer, acknowledge God. You want to aspire to be a choreographer, acknowledge God. You want to aspire to be an astronaut, acknowledge God. Being saved does not take everything away from you. But I ought to acknowledge God. My aspirations ought to begin with God. Huh? Seek first the kingdom of God in what you're doing. Seek the kingdom in it first. And all of his righteousness. And then it says, all of these what? Things shall be what? The great essential to religious life or relationship with God is an active obedience to God's will. It's essential. You, it has to be at what? Active obedience to who? To what? God's will. The knowledge is not in itself religion. Just because you know religion don't make you have a relationship with God. A lot of you can spit scriptures out, you can quote stuff, you can quote a lot of religious stuff, but that doesn't mean that you have a relationship with God. Because religion is a habit. Salvation is a relationship. Huh? But the Christian itself is that person who is faithful and wise, or, or, or rather is the faithful and the wise servant whom, watch this, when the Lord comes, he finds him doing well. There was a fig tree when Jesus passed by one day. The Bible says that he saw the fig tree and it was fig tree season. But the tree wasn't bearing no figs. And while we sit up and play around with what God done gave us to do and we ain't doing nothing with it, he said, cut it down. When he came and found that the fig tree wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing, he said, cut it down. I'm going to try one more time. One day, Jesus popped up and wanted some figs. Saw a fig tree that didn't have no figs on it. And he said, cut it down. Don't ever get to the point to where you calling on God he answer, you tell him, hold on. Let me, let me find, let me find that. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. 
I told him this afternoon, it's kind of like when you call talking about your bills and stuff. I called my mortgage company trying to find out some stuff the other day. And the machine said, uh, due to a high volume calls. Y'all heard that? Due to a high volume call. The wait period is going to be seven, seven minutes, seven, seven minutes, 30 seconds or whatever. And I was like, wow. And I thought about that this afternoon. And I said, you know what? What happens when you decide not to hold on? And then, you know, sometimes I done done it. I done hung up and called back and the wait got longer. And I say to myself, I should have held on. I need you to just help somebody and I tell them you better hold on. Because if you hang up, you might have to wait longer next time. Amen. And then guess what else they say? They say, if you don't want to hold on, leave a number. And we'll call you back. But what if when they call you back, you done got busy doing something else? He, the servant of the Lord, the act of obedience keeps us in faithful service of God that when he does come, he finds us doing what we're supposed to do. So he said, cut the tree down. But the parable was to show not so much as the judgment of the tree, but more so to show the grace of the farmer, the mercy of the farmer. The farmer said, no, no, master, no, 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 master. Give me another year with this tree. Let me, let me put, oh, y'all ain't gonna like this. Let me put some dung on it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sensitive ears finna shut down right now. Let me put some cow manure around it. Let me put some snake on it. My goodness, how many know that when God is doing stuff in your life, it ain't always sweet? Sometimes you got to tell people, just keep your distance. I'm kind of stinking right now. Have you ever walked up to a restaurant in the springtime? You said, Ooh, what is that? They've been just cultivated they, they flower bed. They've been put down that manure. They put down dung. That's what dung is, the excrement of the body's waste. Oh, man, y'all ain't liking that. Paul says, my, my 40 different languages I speak fluently, my, my, my studying at the feet of Gamal, my, my, my Hebraic history, strong bloodline I have. Guess what Paul said? I count that all dung. best thing that happened to me was when I knew Christ and the power of his resurrection. Sometimes the problem with us, we, we don't believe in the resurrection no more. And the resurrection is what gives the Christian power. Come on, help me somebody. So hence the Bible says in Proverbs, Proverbs it says, the perfection of our character consists not in knowledge, but in obedience. We are perfected not by what we know. We are perfected by what we perform. If you don't perform what you know, you can't be perfected. Reading the instruction and not following the instruction ain't going to perfect it. And I done found out so many of us are not perfected because God got to spend a lot of time correcting. Correcting what? Our imperfection. P perfecting what? Our not following his instructions. Perfecting what? Our ability, our inability to be actively obedient to what his will is for our life. Tell us, you got to know the will of God. Let me tell you what the will of God is. Dang, it ain't big. It ain't big as a lot of people try to make it. It ain't as complicated as y'all try to make it. The will of God is you be saved. For God is not willing that any man should perish, but he wants every man to be saved. 
He said, I didn't come that you might have big houses and nice cars and nice clothes. He said, that ain't nothing to me. That, all that belongs to me. He said, if you seek me first, I give you all that. I add all that to your life. He said, but what does it profit you to gain all of this and lose your soul? I want to ask tonight, what do you got in your possession you can give God in exchange for your soul? Nothing. Am I right about it? So the will of God for my life is that I be saved. Huh? The will of God for my life is that I be a witness for him. The will of God for my life is that I advance the kingdom of God. The will of God for my life is not that I be popular. The will of God for my life is, listen, y'all better help me. Because see, when you start telling truth, you're not going to be popular. Tell somebody the truth don't make you popular. Destiny, people ain't going to like you when you tell them the truth, but they will flock around you when you just lie to them all the time. Tell me what I want to hear, not what I need to hear. So I found out a long time ago I wasn't going to be a popular preacher. Because I was the truth, even when I was talking about myself. Amen. Amen. If anybody in my rose think I'm preaching from a perfect position, then there's something wrong with you. I'm the least of y'all. Y'all y'all way better than I am. Or are you? That's why we're here together, huh? That's why we got fellowship, don't we? Touch your neighbor and say, we got a kindred spirit. <laughs> yeah, me and Bishop, I, I feel it. I feel you. I feel you, dog. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, when I want to do right, I do wrong. And every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. And that that I want to do, I don't do, Bishop. And that that I don't want to do, I find myself doing, Bishop. Yeah, that's why I can get some amens every now and then. Yeah. Obedience is superior to knowledge. Write that down. Obedience is superior to knowledge. I don't care how much you know. If you're not obedient to it, you ain't doing nothing. Matter of fact, the Bible says it is, it is possible for a person to have a scriptural creed and to have an ungodly heart. I know people that quote scriptures and then cuss you out. Did y'all hear that? I know people that go to church and will come shoot up your house. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about the real stuff. Jesus said, your lips speak of me now. But your heart, I mean, that's what troubles the world when they say, all the church you talk about, all the church you do, and you acting like that. In other words, there has been no obedient act, there is no active obedience to the will of God. Listen, the question must ever be, is your heart right? For if ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Everybody, I ain't say it was you, but everybody that's not happy with they walk with God, Adrian, ain't doing it. You know what people constantly jack me up about, want to talk about? Did you tell me why is it this and that? And you ain't happy with God, are you? Because you're trying to get me to explain it. I said, you're trying to get me to explain God. And the truth is, you ain't happy with him. Do you not know I don't have to pray to do evil? Man, I'll get into something so fast. I... But when it's, some, when it's the will of God, I need to get myself together. I got to do a fast and I got to get my mind together. I got to post stuff down the drain, flush stuff down the commode. And... For the 15th time, throw stuff in the trash, set it outside. Just to do the will of God. When you're not obeying, you're not happy. The happiness is in doing it. I tell people all the time, the only way you're going to experience it, you got to do it. Everybody want to have a bubble experience. 
Everybody want to be in a protected place but experience everything on the out. You can't experience what's on the outside if you're on the inside. Have you ever, like me, got put on punishment, put in the bubble, and it seemed like all the kids that they want to play in front of your house? What y'all going on down the street? And so now you sitting in the window <laughs> trying to experience what's going on outside because you can't go out there. Why? Because you've been hard-headed. You've been disobedient, right? And then guess what mama and them do? They just strip you of all of it. Get out that window. Mama! I can't go outside. Can I just look out there and see? Get out that window. Get out my curtains. Go on in your room. And so what they did for me when I got outside there next time, I thought about it. I don't want to go back in there. I'm going to do what she say do. God, it's the same way with God, y'all. When you do it, you happy. Am I right about it? How many happy with God? All right. How many are happy with how God doing you? You had to think about that. It was a second of thinking about it right there. I saw it. I felt it and I saw it. Uh, uh, mm, mm. Uh, you had to give a wave offering on that, huh? That vocal, that, that verbal praise. Because uh, uh. God got you doing something that delights him, but you ain't finding delight in it yet. Seems like God just liked what I mm, roll my eyes about, feel bad about. He just delights. He delights in reconciliation. And then he showed delights when you initiate it. When you don't wait, he say you seize the moment. When we're not happy, it's because we're not being obedient. People call us, can you pray? I'm, I, need, I need you to pray for me. Why not agree with me? You know, many people want you to pray for them because they ain't in right relationship with God. But they still want them to do something. Moving on. Obedience is superior to knowledge. You don't even have to have the knowledge if you just obey God. He said, you'll walk in the blessings that'll overtake you. I don't know if y'all have experienced, but I have. I didn't even know the scripture, but I just obeyed God because the spirit led me to do it. And I just got overtook by blessings. I, amen. Just the other day, just the other day, I, I had something going on while things were going on in my family. While that was going on, God had something else going on. Cause don't nothing stop cause something going on the will of God don't push pause it don't as a matter of fact it kicking overdrive in are y'all following what I'm saying and the spirit was saying uh, put, put $500 in there I said huh I, I'm, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just keeping it real with y'all you know when, when God, God know where to test you you know, we, we do our routine and regular stuff, but when he hit us with something that wasn't on the agenda, a pop quiz, huh? Then it's like, huh? And I said, okay, God. Not, I said, okay, God, but I didn't do it immediately. I thought for a minute. I didn't pray about it. I thought about it. Now, there's a difference. Can I get some help back there? There's a difference between praying about something and thinking about it. See, thinking about it, you're trying to figure out what's the reason to this. What am I going to get out of this? Why would you have me doing this? But when you pray about it, you are aligning yourself to what God has ordered. Prayer don't change nothing. I prayed about that thing. and It wasn't your prayer that did that. 
Mm, I can tell. Where y'all kind of raised back on that. It's y'all like, huh? Explain that to me now. If prayer worked, we can pray more. We wouldn't have to be trying to find ways to get you to prayer meetings. This church would be crowded more for prayer than it would be for a musical. If you believe prayer worked like you think it worked. No, 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 no. Prayer, prayer ain't changing nothing. Now, if God ordained it, he ain't going to change it. Jesus, his own son, said, Daddy, I think I want to do what you sent me to do, but that, I don't want to die on that cross. Is that another way? Didn't he ask him that? In the garden of Gethsemane, didn't, didn't he say, Father, if that be another way? And he didn't get an answer from the Father, because God said, I ain't changed what I said. Your mission ain't changed. No adjustments in this. You got to be committed fully. Went back the second time and said, maybe daddy worked the plan out for me. That I don't have to go to the cross. Daddy didn't say nothing then. Father didn't say nothing then. Then he went in there and had a fit like we do. Jesus fell down on the ground. Face in the dirt. Prostrated himself on the dirt. That's when the Bible says sweat like drops of blood. Started running down his brow. Because that eastern dirt was all in his face and he was perspiring and he was crying and it just looked like blood was running down his face. And he said, Daddy, if the only way this cup passed from me is that I drink this cup, then not my will, but your will be done. Now, um, oh, y'all, 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 that's what Philippians, when Paul wrote, he who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made of himself no reputation, humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. I'm about to shout right now. But God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that's above every name that at the name Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord amen <laughs> y'all ain't hear this because obedience is superior to knowledge All right, let's move on. Knowledge alone is positively criminal. Just having knowledge is criminal. That sounds crazy, didn't it? To have knowledge, just knowledge alone is positively criminal. Example, the house that the street you grew up on, you wind up Moving in your early childhood home, your mama's home, left it to you, willed it to you, whatever the case may be. Life brought you back, whatever the case may be. And you live in there. You remember who used to live across the street, Miss Johnson M. Miss Johnson M went to the same church you went to. Your daddy passed Miss Johnson, Miss John, Mr. Miss John. Matter of fact, Miss Johnson was deacon at the church. Are y'all gonna talk to me? But now life has happened. And Deacon and Miss Johnson, them grandkids, selling dope out that house. Raking, raking it up. <laughs> y'all go, I learned that this week. I don't know if y'all know what it is. I don't either. But anyway, raking it up. And, 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 and guess what? You have knowledge of that, don't you? You know what they're doing, don't you? Because you talk about how they mom and daddy would just be turning on in their grave. And when they see you, they say, hey, how you doing, Bishop? How you doing? Good. They, all the respect, all of that. Am I right about it? But it's criminal for me that when the police come and say, do you know where the problem is? You don't want to point across the street. 
some have them on the street you you have knowledge of because you done heard everybody talking about it. And then when they add, I ain't in that. Okay, let me move on. I see, see, see how, how many criminals in here. You knew. You knew. You knew. You knew. See, when, I, when we were coming up, they didn't have surveillance cameras and stuff. We had neighbors. And I didn't know who was telling it on me until I got grown. I was so trying to find out. Now, how she know I was in the backyard? Told, told, mama told me everything I did. I'm like, how mama know that? Then I found out Miss Woods was telling it. Because Miss Woods lived on the street behind us. Yeah, old Jeff was back here smoking cigarettes. Yeah, I saw he had one, he had one of them slits, slits mouth liquor bulls. Yeah, bull. That blue bull. On his silver can. Say, man. I... Anyway, let me move on. And they were telling everything. They had knowledge of it. Huh? And they was they what they was really doing was short stopping us from being totally disobedient. Because then they put us in a position, I can't do nothing here. Because somebody going to see me. Okay, all right, let me move on. All right. How vast it is that we dishonor and the dishonor that's done to God when we have a perfect knowledge of what our duty is. The man who is neglectful of his privilege and refuses the obedience which of right we owe God. Tell somebody you owe God to be obedient. <coughs> you know why? Because He's given you a privilege. What is the privilege, Bishop? The privilege is He's giving you your detail. Anybody been in the military? Anybody in ROTC? Anybody been in any organization? Good Lord. <coughs> what have y'all done all y'all life? Sports. I tell people all the time, man, it's hard to preach in my church. I said, because they ain't never done nothing. <laughs> At least they want me to believe that. But anyway, you've been in uh, military. Uh, they have what they call detail. Detail is what? What you are assigned to do. If you, if you, your detail might be checking all the commode handles. They ain't asked you to clean the commode. You ain't getting in trouble for checking the handle. When, when, when the sergeant come by, when the commanding officer come through, and you lifting up the, the back of the, the commode, and he say, you in trouble? And you say, why? I'm, but you're not doing what I told you to do. Y'all ain't in this. Somebody say detail. <coughs> it's a privilege for God to give you your detail. It's a slap in his face for you not to carry it out. The privilege, we it's our right to obey God. We ain't gonna be upright until we do what's when we're not doing what's right, guess what we're doing? We're dishonoring God. We are aggravated. G. Banton says we are aggravated by ourselves because in offending God and refusing to do the truth, do, the, do what's right, we're just making it hard on ourselves. Tell somebody, stop aggravating yourself. You're trying to blame the aggravation on your job. You're trying to blame the aggravation on your man, your girl, your woman, or what, your boo, your babe, whatever the case may be. But the aggravation comes from your disobedience to the will of God. I know what they want to do. 
but what does God want me to do? Hello. Secondly, there is, David says, teach me to do your will. We have to be taught how to do the will. I don't know how to love a person who don't want to be loved. I know how to love somebody who want to love back. That ain't hard to do. But I have to be taught. I got to love both of them. I got to be taught how to forgive. That's why God always putting folk before me that I got to forgive. Because he's trying to teach me how. And the sooner I learn how to forgive this, I can forgive that. And I can forgive this person. And I can forgive, uh-oh. It done got quiet again. Jesus told Peter this, y'all. I'm glad I read my Bible because y'all be, I be trying to bring lessons that I think going to bless your life. Jesus told Peter one time, get behind me. Get thee behind me, Satan. He was talking to Peter. The same Peter that had just said, thou art the Christ. You know, they had asked, who do, Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? Peter, you know, he always spoke from there. Some say that I lied. Word on the street. Word on the street. Thou, some say that I was Elijah. Some say, some don't even say you. John the Baptist reincarnated. Because, you know, he, Herod chopped John the Baptist's head off. Because John the Baptist told Herod, you and your wife going to hell. Because you know y'all ain't supposed to be married. You know that woman, your cousin. I told you, truth ain't going to make you popular. Truth will get your head put on a silver platter. Some say you John the Baptist, John the Baptist come back from the grave. Some say that you are Elijah. Then Jesus said, hmm, who do you say I am? Then Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, Peter. But my father, which is in heaven, did. Now, it wasn't four scriptures later that Jesus had just commended Peter. Now he has to condemn Peter and call him Satan. He called him a rock prior and then post, he said, you the devil. Uh, you can be looking at your husband, but they talking like Satan. You can be looking at your wife, but they sounding like the devil. Your kids, as cute as they are. The devil could be done got all in them and making them act as plum food. And Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Here's the word. You are an offense to the kingdom of God. You know why you are an offense to the kingdom of God? Because you don't savor. You don't have a taste for the kingdom. Look at somebody and ask, what you drink? What, what's your poison? Uh, uh, only my drinkers know what I'm talking about right now. Pick your pause. <laughs> Come on, man, y'all, y'all. Somebody say, deficiency. Secondly, this text reveals, David says, for you are my God. You are my God. You are my God. For you are my God. That's a deficiency acknowledged right there. I'm not my own God. In and of myself, I can't do nothing. You are my God. Now, if you your God, then you're responsible for you. But when God is your God, you recognize that you have, you have acknowledged. Listen, when, when you read through the song, thou art my God. Thou art, you are our God. O God of heaven, our God. O, there is an acknowledgement of a deficiency. Even the pagan nations realized they needed a God, so they built one. They needed some deity that they felt was a higher power 
that when they got in the stuff, it could bring them out of it. But of course, we know there's none like Jehovah. He's the only true and living God. All them other ones might have been real, but they were real fake. Listen, you all not want a God, you got to tote around. Hands and can't even hear you. Eyes and can't even see you. Ears and can't. Come on, somebody. Mouth can't even talk to you. Well, let me move on. When, you acknowledge, when we acknowledge our deficiency, then there comes an active obedience to the will of God. Here is what the, the deficiency that's acknowledged in this text. It, it was a practical deficiency. Look at the text. For you are my God. As the knowledge of God's will, there is a deficiency in the knowledge of God's will in particular circumstances of life. Hmm. Y'all thinking? That, that, there are some areas that are particular. I got some circumstances. And you got some too. Particular. <clears throat> get to talking to somebody and get to some of them particulars and see how short the conversation gets. Tell somebody, I, I got a gag order on this right here. I can't say nothing about this because I'm not knowledgeable about it. Right, right about now, there's a whole lot of particular circumstances in your life that God ain't shed no light on yet. And so you can't move because you're deficient. You don't have enough mental strength. You don't have no spiritual stamina. You, you, don't, have the, you don't have the power of prayer. You got the what? Wait on God. Show me the way. I'm going to tell you, where you are waiting on God is where you ain't moving. Because the wheel ain't clear. My God, my God. Don't let nobody rush you. Huh? I dare somebody tonight to just say, I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna stand still until his will is clear to me. I don't come, I'm, I can't let circumstances make me move right now. Out of God's will. Tell somebody to stay right where you are. Do you not know how many people done got, done got lost trying to be found? Because they called in their location one place and they got to moving. And when help came, they wasn't where they said they were. I need about five people to hear God right now. Tell somebody, stay where you are. You don't have enough knowledge yet. Don't, don't, don't write your name on that contract yet. Don't sign that dotted line yet. Don't listen at all the talk. It, it looks right, it sounds right, it feels right. That's all flesh. Your spirit ain't right. Tell somebody, my spirit ain't right about this. Oh, he talking a good talk. Oh, she whispering some good stuff in your ear. But something in your spirit ain't Because the spirit bear witness with itself. I got to stand still until his will is clear. Because everybody can see you doing something. But I, I, I'm kind of skeptical about doing something everybody see me doing that I don't see yet. You know, I kind of see, I've always seen you as, I ain't seen that. Then sometimes people reveal to you what they think about you too. Well, you know, I ain't never seen you in that position. Why not? You saw yourself there. Okay, okay. I'm supposed to be just getting touchy in here right now. I see y'all kind of drawing all back on me right now. That's the knowledge of God's will in particular circumstances of life. That's particulars. That's some particulars. How many know you being perfected by particulars right now? 
I'm being perfect. I'm personal. I don't know what is going on in your life. I'm being perfected by particulars. Circumstances that I be like, hmm. Circumstances calling for causing or calling for this type of conduct. But because in that area I'm deficient, I can't play the part. I can't play stupid no more. Stupid don't look good on me no more. Doing the fool. It don't compliment me, it costs me now. And it ain't always costing me criminal, civil stuff. It's costing my spirit to be grieved. It's costing my deliverance to be delayed. Somebody say particulars. God is working out the particulars. Hmm? When, when he tell you to do something, you can't generally do it. You got to carry it out. Tell three people your steps have been ordered. You can't take two and hip scotch three. The word says walk it out. No, you can't jump over this and walk through that. The word says you got to go through this. He says when thou goest through the fire and when thou goest through the flood, not, not get a raft boat and all that kind of stuff. He said go through it. Because you can't see what he's trying to show you getting a raft. You can't see what he's trying to show you walking in there with a fire hose. The only way you're going to see how you went through the fire and didn't get burned. The only way you're going to see how you went through the water and didn't get wet. You got to do it the way he said. Oh my God. Even when the enemy comes in comma. Pause right there. I'm, I'm going to try one more time. The Bible says, when the enemy comes in, see y'all run it all together. That's why you miss your shout. When the enemy comes in, comma. Because he comes in. And he come in rough shot and he come in wreaking havoc. He come in doing the fool. But when he come in, pause. God raises up a standard. Oh. <clears throat> Sometimes y'all got to realize our standards are too low. God trying to put you in a high place. You still keeping your mind on a low level. It's a whole lot of enemies you wouldn't even have to deal with if you let God put that David says, I'm like, I, I, I get hinds feet in high places. Y'all know what a hind is, don't you? A hind is a deer. That's what they used to call deer. Hinds feet, hinds feet, hinds feet. The, the hinder part of that deer, the quarter back there, them hinds feet in high places. Deer just... And every time the archer, the arrow try to hit him, he can't because he can just bounce from rock to rock. You know, I just be glad to tell the devil all the time, you miss me again. That there is a practical deficiency as not as, as to the knowledge, not of the particular circumstances of life, but the knowledge of the hindrances to the performance of God's will. What's hindering me in performing God's will? Why can't I do what God hindrances? Somebody say hindrances. Now we can easily point, play the blame game. But the question was to you. Irregardless of circumstances, what's your hindrance? Well, if I had a better job, if I had a better partner, if I had somebody that, if I had more money, 
if I had a better education, if I had a better husband, if I had a better wife, if I had, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I then you're saying those are your what? Hindrances. But the true hindrance is not none of them things you name. Paul says the will to perform and is there. I want to do your will, God. Let me check. Let me check. How many want to do the will of God? Keep your hand up. Blah, 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 blah. Keep your hand up. I'm just trying to see how long you can keep it up. Because that's going to say how long you will <laughs> do the will of God. What's hindering you from keeping your hand up? Man, I done worked all day. Bishop, I'm tired. I, it's me. I want to do his will. What's hindering you from holding your hand up? Okay, go on, put it down now. What hindered you from putting it all the way up? <laughs> what hinders you to perform? You can put them down now. Put them down now. Put them down. What hinders us from performing? Come on, somebody. Is it 8 o'clock? Man. What hinders us from performing the will of God? It's because there is, we acknowledge that we have a deficient. We don't know everything God wants us to know. And then finally, I close. Practical skill of doing the will of God. The practical skill of doing the will of God. The practical skill of doing it. Whenever your skill is not on the right skill level. It's due to you not practicing enough. I don't care what you do. You got to practice, 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 practice. You just can't dribble a ball one time and be a step curve. can't catch one football and be a lamb for the cowboy. You can't do that. And all these other people. You can't be a superstar just by being on TV. You got to what? You got to what? You got, I got some athletes in here. Huh? You got to what? You got to what? Destiny? You got, you coach. You got to run what? That play what? And then some coaches, what, make you run it till you get it. Huh? I couldn't stand football practice. When, I mean, and if one person messed up because it's a team sport, everybody got to do it all over again. Why we got to run it again? So-and-so messed up. Well, he messed up. I didn't, everybody else. No, no this is a team, ain't it? Y'all better hear what I'm saying right now. Somebody say practice. 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 Practice, 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 practice what, Bishop? The will of God. Obedience is superior to knowledge. You can know what to do, but if you don't do it, you look like you don't know what you're doing. Amen. God bless you tonight. And may he keep you is our prayer. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight online. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. I pray tonight that you were blessed by the word of God. Practice, practice, practice. Huh? Our deficiencies are due to a lack of practicing. Huh? It's hard to have a great performance if there haven't been good rehearsals. Huh? Regina, how many times you done showed up here on Thursday night with the choir and went over a new song one time and expect to sing it Sunday morning? You got days in between. And even after practicing all night Thursday night, they still got to at home. They got to sing it in the car. They got to hear it 
you know, before Sunday morning. And then they have a little quick rehearsal over in the wherever over there. And then some people still ain't still get up here lip syncing. And them the people who haven't what? So when you hadn't practiced, you can't perform. I don't know what's wrong with you. You ain't practice. And I can tell, and I say it to Sister Regina sometimes, did y'all go over there? Why don't I say that to you? No. And if y'all pay attention when I'm preaching, you can tell bitches then. then I'm not exempt. And I can tell when you in the sitting in the pew whether cause you ain't in the choir, cause you ain't on the earth and all that, and you have to show up for earth practice and all that. I can tell when you ain't practice worship. Some hindering you. Sitting there with your arms folded, looking out. Amen. May the Lord bless thee and may the Lord keep thee and may the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And you're going out and then you're coming in. May he grant you peace. Till we meet again, the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. I want to thank everybody for your cards, your calls, your condolences, your money. I didn't finish the story. When I gave that five hundred dollars, I sold that five. I was gonna get something else with it for myself, right? I, I set that aside to do something, and I sold that money like I went on and did it. I stopped thinking about it and I prayed about it, and I did. I just aligned myself with God's will, and God gave it back to me a hundredfold. A hundredfold. A hundredfold. Go on and do what God tell you to do. Amen.